Considering how much it's bounced back and forth between balls to the wall craziness and Michael Mann style heist capers, Rockstar have certainly experimented a ton with what GTA's tone is or can be. Is it the weirdly quirky likes of nabbing a jetpack and soaring over San Andreas? How about executing a double-crossing gang leader in cold blood before dumping their body in the harbour? After what kind of felt like a decade of soul-searching, 2013 felt like Rockstar saying, we don't know, we tried something and it didn't work, in relation to how GTA 4's more grounded tone was then thrown out the window, replaced by the complete insanity of Trevor in GTA 5. That said, over the years, this kitchen sink mentality has forced the player to endure some spectacularly misguided and downright terrible missions, the vast majority being written for the sake of humour where we could have just enjoyed them as a cutscene. From RC toys filled with explosives to what can only be described as Dock Worker Simulator 3000, GTA is definitely the king of the open world sandbox or the pauper of good mission design when we least expect it. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are the 11 biggest WTF moments in GTA history. Number 11. Black Project. San Andreas. GTA is a jack of many traits and a master of some, but one mechanic Rockstar could just never get down was stealth. From CJ pulling off one stab kills in San Andreas to GTA 5's sporadic use of crouch walking, you could never really tell whether you were supposed to be playing that way or not. For Black Project though, it remains the one standout mission where you, completely randomly, have to infiltrate GTA's version of Area 51, of course named Area 69, because teehee Josh Brown teehee lol Josh Brown. Not only that, but it almost immediately dawns on you how absolutely ridiculous the whole premise is. A gangster from Grove Street who only a few hours back was playing basketball and buying new baseball caps, now attempting to steal some top secret project from right under the government's nose, either this cemented GTA's kooky anything goes tone, or it marked the turning point where Rockstar went to far and what GTA 4 was a response to. Personally, I'm totally in the former camp as this led to acquiring the jetpack, an item that's either the coolest thing ever or the biggest cause of forehead slapping this side of Red Dead Online. Number 10. Demolition Man and Bombs Away – Vice City if you ever needed a reason to pray, just be thankful Rockstar stopped loading their games with these awful toy missions. San Andreas still got a follow-up, which I've placed way higher on this list, but Vice City first had you pilot a tiny helicopter as you navigated a construction site, and Bombs Away gave you a tiny biplane. It's all because video games, I guess, and because some absolute pillock at Rockstar's design meetings thought it was a good idea. Either that, or it's the best prank anyone's ever pulled on the biggest amount of people, designed to test just how much we wanted to get through the next GTA after GTA 3. Because the thing is, GTA's physics always seem to break whenever you got behind the controls of a miniaturized vehicle. General turning circles are suddenly way sharper and more unpredictable than before, and that's before you factor in enemies who are trying to bring you down regardless. In Bombs Away in particular, the basic camera view couldn't even show you what was directly beneath the plane you were controlling. Genuinely fighting the controls to stay airborne whilst being shot at and having to line up drops you can't pinpoint, it was a living hell and one of the only things from old school GTA that I was very glad to see the back of. Number 9. Grassroots – GTA 5 For this one, you have to imagine Rockstar's execs were just sitting around a big table thinking, hmm, what haven't we done yet? I've got it! Aliens pipes up one in the corner, and before anyone could say, but why, it was scripted and sent to the coding department. Enter Grassroots, a mission you can undertake as any of GTA 5's three characters, but whose reaction to getting baked should really be seen from Michael's point of view. This isn't an infuriating WTF moment and more a sure why not, as there are a number of HR Geiger-esque aliens, a minigun, and flying through the sky like the frickin' Christmas snowman. This was the closest GTA 5 got to the style of comedy Saints Row 3 and beyond completely nailed, and just Rockstar really were off their faces and I kinda like them just freewheeling for a bit. I'm sure they're nothing serious, but, uh, I never let them get to me. Number 8. Espresso To Go – GTA 3 Back when Rockstar were just getting used to crafting GTA in 3D, they were barely scratching the surface of their more quirky side. Thus, Espresso To Go has been regarded as one of the most annoying missions of the whole game, mainly because GTA 3 was so stellar otherwise, but its premise still involves you speeding across Liberty City, awkwardly ramming into a handful of coffee stands to stop the spread of spank. Back in 2001, the likes of Havoc Physics and ragdolling bodies just weren't a thing, hence you were resigned to making like Homer Simpson and awkwardly headbutting these things until they eventually gave way and crumbled. Number 7. Scouting the Port – GTA 5 Okay, just… what? Not only is Scouting the Port one of the worst missions in GTA history, but it comes right at the beginning of playing as Trevor when he first gets to the big city. All of us were expecting a crime spree, a reason to go completely crazy while hundreds looked on, or some sort of other nihilistic explosion of pure insanity. Nope, you had to slowly lift shipping containers and place them on different spots around a dock. 
It was as boring as it sounds and it lasted for a good 10 minutes. People say that GTA 5's by the book torture sequence was harrowing and unnecessary, but this was Rockstar really losing sight of what anyone wanted to play. Number 6. In the Air Tonight – Vice City Stories Nothing says random 80s thing quite like Phil Collins, and although the original Vice City was rammed full of incredible songs and cameos from a number of celebs, PSP sequel Vice City Stories got a full-on recreation of a Phil Collins solo gig. Emerging to perform a version of In the Air Tonight complete with brilliantly basic drumming animations, the scene comes as a reward for repeatedly protecting Phil after an unpaid debt leads him to being on someone's hit list. Brilliantly, Collins plays himself as a pretty happy-go-lucky guy, flown in for the gig, undergoing a massive firefight and still managing to play his set. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, I kinda don't feel like modern GTA would ever do a mission like this again. To me, that's a massive shame as I really want Rockstar to bring back the quirk and also bring back all those celebrity cameos. Hi Vic, what do you think of the show? Killer! Cheers! Number 5. Robbing Uncle Sam – San Andreas WTF for all the wrong reasons, San Andreas was the last time Rockstar would use the GTA 3 engine, but that also had the knock-on effect of the devs just seeing what kind of mission types and designs they could get away with. When it went wrong, the end result was as mind-numbing as this. A forklift simulator, one where you had to load up the back of a truck full of tiny boxes one by one by one before gunning down a number of presumably innocent soldiers on duty. All because… GTA, I guess? Number 4. Did somebody say yoga? GTA 5 a picture really is worth a thousand words, and in GTA 5's case, no sooner had we been introduced to the isn't it funny they're doing sexual poses nature of the yoga instructor's flirtations with Michael's wife that there were prompts on screen and a number of basic minigames to complete yourself. It's not that they were inherently bad or mechanically unresponsive, just instantly time-wasting. Put it this way, when you've paid full price for the next installment in Grand Theft Auto after a five-year wait, being forced to complete some hilarious yoga positions just felt like Rockstar were taking the piss faster. No wonder I'm you too, please. Namaste. Number 3. The Driver – Vice City Speaking of making you think how the hell did this get through testing, meeting the mound of pure awkwardness that is Hillary and having to beat him in a one-sided race was impossible to nail first time. And why? Because he was literally bolted to the road for the sake of difficulty. It meant that if you got too close and his AI needed to make him swerve even slightly to the left or right, that was you off the road and into a nearby alleyway, failing the mission instantly. Throw in the fact that his car was incredibly fast and if you couldn't get ahead immediately, you might as well just hit restart anyway and try again, complete with the same travel time and cutscenes since your last save. It was and remains pure agony. Please, treat me bad. Number 2. Pulling Favors – GTA 5 Hopefully with GTA 6, we'll see Rockstar invest their considerable cash into fleshing out the parts of the game that really need it. Like combat, for example, rather than coding anything close to more of this. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that making us literally park up next to cars and tow them back to a yard was supposed to represent the bottom rung of Franklin's life. The incentive that helps the audience realize just how naff his original job was, in turn providing a stark contrast to where he ends up. Altogether, it provides ample motivation to why he would even attempt a life of crime with Michael and Trevor, because no one ever wants to go back to this. And no offense meant to any tow truck drivers. I don't want to believe that Rockstar needed padding for the beginning of the game, falling back on the assumption that all open world games must have some aimless busywork, but man if this thing didn't outstay its welcome. And number 1. Supply Lines – San Andreas Anyone who survived a horrific accident or Sekiro's back third might claim to have seen some sh**, but those people probably haven't played Supply Lines. Just those two words are enough to bring back horrific memories of pure disc-snapping difficulty, and if you need a longer reminder, this is a mission so ridiculous it's a miracle any of us saw the rest of the story through. To be honest though, looking back now, I kinda love just how much Rockstar were throwing things at the wall just to see what would stick. The 2000s were by far the most experimental time for them as a studio, and though I utterly despise this part of their process, I guess in hindsight you kinda have to laugh at the journey that we've all been on. Still, from forcing you to pilot tiny toy planes to putting you in gunfights against enemies it's impossible to line up shots with, to slapping a time limit on the whole thing and giving you zero checkpoints, Supply Lines is the epitome of WTF, how the hell, and screw this all in one. Rockstar, there are many things you should relearn from the original trilogy going forward, but please never ever make any more experimental missions, particularly if they remind you of anything like this. And all of that is my list on Rockstar's weirdest moments across all of GTA. And again, what a ludicrously fun journey we've all been on, watching them go from a tiny team in Scotland to a worldwide phenomenon. Let me know your favourite insane missions down in the comments below. I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, please check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast and I'll catch you soon.